Hey everybody, it's Dave here from Dragon Hill Games, and you're watching This Week in MTG Finance. As always, and before we get started, I want to thank MTG Stocks for allowing us to use graphical information for the purposes of this video. The trend continues for reserve list cards this week, and we have a couple of pirates taking up the top spots on our list. So let's dive right in, and we're going to start right here with Stone Calendar from the Dark. Coming in at number 10 and up 45% this week, Stone Calendar at 32 bucks slots perfectly into Commander decks that have huge top ends. It works really well beside cards like Chromatic Orrery and Ugin the Ineffable, especially when you're trying to cast things like Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Now our number 9 winner baffles me a little bit and that would be Mold Demon from Legends, currently valued at $36.50 and this is also up 45% this week. Seems like a pretty terrible card. Now I did a bit of digging to try to see if I could find something, some sort of new leak or something that relates to this card that actually might make it playable and I couldn't find anything. So if you know, why don't you let me know in the comment section below. Mold Demon is a 7 mana 6-6 six six that when it enters play you have to sacrifice 2 swamps or sacrifice mold demon now this has been errata to say a fungus demon as opposed to a mold demon the old printing on the card so maybe that has something to do with it regardless of that fact it's probably just a continuation of reserve list investment now our number eight winner is also on the reserve list and it's also up 45 percent this week and that would be life matrix from legends valued at 25 dollars and 50 cents let's have a look at life matrix there's actually some interesting interactions with this card especially when you combine it with things like doubling season or the ozolith so life matrix is a four mana cost artifact and you can pay four and tap it now you can only do this during your upkeep but then you put a matrix counter on a creature and you can remove this counter at any time to regenerate that creature. So if you combine it with things like doubling season, you can put multiple counters on something, or even the Ozolith could potentially have a whole bunch of regeneration counters shift over to your commander. So definitely some interesting builds that could be had around Life Matrix. The original printing of Jandor Saddlebags from Arabian Nights is far and away the best looking printing of this card. That classic black border with the original art is just fantastic looking and that is why our number 7 winner is up 61% this week to almost 29 bucks. Now it's not on the reserve list, it's had quite a few printings. If you need to pick up Jandor Saddlebags you can definitely find one on the cheap. Perfect for certain commander builds. For 2 mana we get an artifact that we can pay 3 and tap it to untap a creature. So when you have commanders like Cranko and Salvala that have to tap to do awesome stuff, it's always nice to have ways in your deck to be able to use them multiple times a turn. Straight back to the Legends from Legends. Chromium in the number 6 spot is at 50 bucks, and this is up 67% this week. Esper Colored Dragon with a huge mana cost. We're talking about 8 mana, 2 white, 2 blue, 2 black, and 2 to get a 7-7 Flying Rampage 2 Dragon that you have to pay one of each of the Esper Colors during your upkeep or it is buried. Now you can still pick up one from Chronicles for under a buck should you be so inclined. I think our number 5 winner, Ramsey's Overdark, would be a super fun casual commander build. But $100 and up 77% is a hefty price to pay for your casual commander. This guy would be super fun though. Ramsey's Overdark is 6 mana, so 2 blue, 2 black, and 2 for a 4-3 legendary that has tap, destroy target creature with an enchantment on it. If we head on over to EDH Rec, we can see there's all kinds of fun enchantments we can throw on our opponent's creatures to basically make them ours. Things like Unholy only indenture, shades form, false demise, all return creatures to the battlefield when they die under our control. Of course this combines really well with things like Hateful Eidolon to give us a continuous card draw engine. Ramsey's Overdark would be a fantastic, fun, casual commander build. Coming in at number 4, we have a really interesting card that's also on the reserve list, and that would be Talarian Entrancer from Weatherlight. Valued at $5.25, and this thing is up 83% this week. So for just 2 mana, 1 blue and 1, we're getting a wizard. He's a 1-1. One, one. Guess that part really doesn't matter too much, but whenever he is blocked by any creature, gain control of that creature at end of combat. So imagine doing something fun like putting a lure effect on Talarian Entrancer and just swinging into a mass of board. You gain control of essentially all of their creatures. And it doesn't matter that Talarian Entrancer dies or leaves the battlefield, the effect of that control does not wear off until the end of game. This could be a really fun and interesting build for Commander. 
Our number three winner this week, Skirk Fire Marshal from Dual Decks Anthology, is a printing specific spike at $8.50. This is up 95% this week. So there's been a few other printings of this card, another Dual Decks printing, and then the original Onslaught version. But of note, if we have a look at any of the other printings, they're also on the rise. Wizards is starting to slowly and quietly make Pirate Tribal a viable strategy for Commander. And if you're going to be building a Pirate deck in Commander, Admiral Beckett Brass is the way to go. Our number two winner is up 156% this week to $2.50. Every set has had one or two of really good Pirates in it. Even Jumpstart had our number one winner, and that was Corsair Captain. We'll get to him in just a second, but for now let's get back to Admiral Beckett Brass. Since we're getting Pirates here and there, and actually a couple of the leaks from Commander Legends also included some new and interesting pirates. Now, assuming we don't get Admiral Beckett Brass reprinted in Commander Legends, picking him up for $2.50, even with the current price increase, is still a great deal for future investments. And this brings us to our number one winner this week, and that would be Corsair Captain from Jumpstart. This card was just $2.50 a couple of weeks ago, and today you're going to be paying 9 bucks. It's up 241% this week. Like I was talking about with Admiral Beckett Brass, pirates are slowly becoming a thing, and Pirate Tribal Deck would be a fun deck in Commander for sure. And if you're going to be building any kind of tribal deck, of course you need Lords, and Corsair Captain fits the bill for pirates for three mana we're getting a 2-2 and when corsair captain enters the battlefield we create a treasure token of course other pirates we control also get plus one plus one a definite must include in any tribal pirate deck All right, before I get to cards I'm investing in this week, as always, if you're a subscriber, you know I want to thank you for being here. I really appreciate your continued support of this channel. And I'm also really thankful for everybody who has visited our online marketplace over at www.dragonhillgames.com. And you can find the link for that in the description of this video. I really wanted to put a focus this week on good quality land. So we're going to start right here with Maze of Ith, specifically the Double Masters printing. You can grab this for just 8 bucks, and the foil is only $11, which is cheaper than every other printing. It's had a few printings, Eternal Masters around 12 bucks, and then a few promos, and the original Dark printing at 30 bucks. Huge card for Commander. This type of land is always going to be in demand. Up next, we have Wasteland, specifically the Eternal Masters printing. Now, you can get this version for under 29 bucks. The original Wasteland is still under $35, which is also a great deal for the original printing. And it recently had a Zendikar Expedition reprint at 110 bucks. Huge demand for Wasteland across multiple formats. He's playing Vintage, Legacy, and of course... Commander. It's currently in a situation where it's pretty much bottomed out and there's never going to be a better time or a better price to pick up the Eternal Masters printing. Now I did a bit of digging and the cheapest printing of any Shockland you can get your hands on right now is Hallowed Fountain, specifically the Ravnica Allegiance printing. Sitting at just 8 bucks and this is a fantastic pickup. Anytime you can get your hands on a Shockland for under 10 bucks is a really good deal. Of course all of the Shocklands see play across multiple formats, usually things like Modern, Pioneer, and Commander. This had a reprint in Zendikar Expeditions at $105. Since we're touching on lands this week, I decided to hit up Mystic Sanctuary one more time. I've mentioned this card before, and here I am mentioning it again. At a dollar, this is still a great pickup, even though it's a common from a recent set. Mystic Sanctuary enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more islands. And when it enters the battlefield untapped, you may put an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. This has turned out to be a key piece in a bunch of combos in a few different formats, namely Modern, Vintage, and Legacy. Of course, it's just really good value for your Commander deck as well. All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of This Week in MTG Finance. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. It really helps me out, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.